So here we are, travel day, what's today? The 30th? We were hungry, so we stopped at Kerrville. Uh, I went through just McDonald's drive-through and then we decided to stop at this picnic area. I don't even know what mile marker we're at. But after we get done eating, I was like, hey, let's just walk around. Anytime we stop, we always walk around. And then all of a sudden, we, I'm hearing hissing. Sorry about the wind, it is very windy here. Start hearing some hissing. And then, I don't know if you can see it right here. This was Dan pulled four, so we can see we have a, well, it looks like a screw in our tire. So <laughs> let the fun begin. At least the good thing about this is it didn't happen on the road. The good thing about that is, is at least that we caught it ourselves. We caught it before we go out. And this is why every time that you stop, whether it's to get gas or whatever, you want to do a walk around because you can prevent uh, an on the road issue because we're parked at a picnic area. So it actually lucked out. It sucks that it happened, but at least we're pulled off the road to where we can actually fix it without having to worry about getting mowed over by people texting or people speeding or people outrunning the cops, whatever the case may be. It's laundry day for one. But in conjunction with laundry day, it is packing day. Packing day because we are tired of hauling stuff across America. So we're calling it quits with all this extra weight. We ain't leaving the uh, the RV life, not anytime soon anyway. So why am I working in here? Uh, Dan did a lot of the stuff in here as well. We're getting stuff ready so we can take it over storage. There's already stuff in the Forerunner out there. Dan is out here going through and downsizing and consolidating stuff that we actually absolutely need we've been hauling stuff for across america for two years so uh, a lot of stuff we don't use or we don't use often enough to require for it to take up space and weight every time we come back to alamogordo which is where i retired out of the air force from from the base that's out here this is where our storage unit is we decided to keep it here because the climate is dry and there's no humidity so no mold and not th things get ruined so we went over there yesterday to reorganize our storage unit so we can make room for the things that are coming because the e-bikes are in the forerunner are going to be in here once we get to arizona so let me stop talking so i can help dan so today's adventure is taking us to a little uh historic site some of the you may know uh, we're in Alamogordo, New Mexico. This is where I was stationed at for two years just before I retired. So I never went out to this spot. So they only offer it twice a year. It's going to be the first Saturday in October and the first Saturday in April. So yeah, we're going to the Trinity site where they dropped the first atomic bomb. So we are on Highway 54 coming up from Alamogordo and Tolerosa into Corazozo. And that's a popular little town here that you're going to have to drive through if you're going to go anywhere north south between Albuquerque and Alamogordo and um, it's a quaint very small town it does have like two gas stations but it is memorable for all the little donkeys and mules that it has here not live they're all statues they're all painted different colors and stuff as well and they're let's we're gonna try to capture them uh they seem to be doing a lot of road work up there there's one on top of the building there there used to and be a lot right here but i think they yeah. moved them because they're widening the road this looks totally different well that's disappointing all the mules are gone <laughs> but at least they're widening the road this road needed some work here's one the police officer one. oh yeah the police officer one has the blue stripe there's a black and white one. But as you go through Kirizozo, Kirizozo, I don't know if I'm butchering or even saying it right, you're gonna to come to a four-way stop. Uh, to get to the Trinity site, you'll take a left. You'll also go through the Valley of Fires, which is a recreation area. I don't think they have sewer, but they do have a dump station. They do have RV spots, but you're out there in the old lava flows. But if you go right, it'll take you to Capitan, uh, New Mexico. And that's where Smokey the Bear, the Smokey the Bear Museum is at. And that's also where the real life Smokey the Bear uh, is buried. It's a cool little thing. When we were stationed out here, we went out there already. We haven't filmed some of this stuff before, but we've been to all these locations. 
I'm and assuming. past the Angel of Fires. Uh, We're going to go Brown. west on 380. Valley of Fires, yeah. It's right there is the there's Sunset Valley more. Fires. Donkeys? Four miles. That's a cool spot. If you get a chance to go there, that's really, really cool. And they've got a nice, like, I think it was a one mile walk that was paved. I don't think it's one mile. I don't think it's that long. But it's really cool because you're like out there. It's interactive. You're in the old lava flows that have hardened, but you're out there walking in them. It's really, really cool. You'll see birds and lizards and all kinds of other <laughs> wildlife out there in that joint. So looking at the horizon, you can see the field here for the pasture, but see where it's black and it's a very dark strip before it gets light over there. That was all the lava flow that came through here. And I did want to clarify one of the things for the Trinity site. It is only open twice a year, once in the spring, once in the fall. And previously it had always been the first Saturday of April and October. However, this year, and we don't know if it's because of COVID last year, um, it is April 2nd, which is today, and October 15th of 2022. And on the White Sands Missile Range Public Affairs Office uh, website. website, they say it's the first, sat first Saturday in April and the third Saturday in October. Here's Valley of Fires Recreation Park sign. It's a half mile out, but this is all but, the lava flows right here. Your road goes right through it. You can see it, it. yeah. It That's the camping um, RV site. And they got a little museum back there, if you can see that building. It was cool back in 2018 when we went through. But out here is where the trail's at. You're like out there yeah. in that stuff. want to come to the Trinity site I think this is not a bad place to stage it'll definitely put you closer <clears throat> just remember there's no sewer <laughs> they do have uh, they do have a dump station they do have a dump station they do have primitive uh, tent sites as well and that's down towards the bottom but they have a lot of cool I mean cool knowledge to about the area and whatever and they do have bathrooms and showers there too mm -hmm. this is the entrance off of 380 New Mexico and this is the White Sands Missile Range Stallion Range Center which is still five miles away you can see there's a lot of crowd uh, protesters that are coming up here we got the press we got police taking care of taking care of us and now we're turning in it's still five miles to the gate itself but we're technically on White Sands property for this road. We are four miles from 380. It's a five mile road to get to the actual base gate itself. And we are, of course, in line. We've been in waiting what, 10 minutes so far. Yeah, we've been here for a while. I mean, there's you got RVs in front of us. There's a fifth wheel in front of us. There's a Class C behind us. It looks like there's more parked up here, and I can see a Class C over there as well. You can see the, the line in front of us and behind us. Now, right now, it's like 10.30 in the morning. Now, even though there's an RV in front of us and behind us, there is no camping here. Remember, the gate only opens for to the public at 8 a.m., and everybody has to leave at 3.30 p.m. So they will, at the site, move everybody out make sure everybody has gone to their cars to exit out of here it is quite a few miles and uh, we'll try to get that distance for you uh, to leave the site what i'm going to say is you need to have a government issued id as well as for proof life. of insurance of your car you're if you're stuck in this line if you come out here you'll be stuck in this line don't worry about it because you're going to have time to get all that stuff ready but make sure you bring it with you hopefully everybody's carrying a picture or a photo id with them already because if you're just driving, 18 and over yeah your children will not need it. <laughs> children will not need and it. you can bring pets however the pets cannot go onto the bus that goes to the mcdonald ranch house and we'll explain that a little later but we've got ava with us she's back there looking out the window at i guess tumbleweeds ava She's yawning. <laughs> <laughs> We're here at Trinity site right now. You got a big parking lot. And then the rest is all walking. The very first thing you come at the entrance is a shell of what they call jumbo. 
Thought you were in weapons. Hi to everybody, hot dog. And you also have a bus that takes you out to McDonald Ranch. Uh, we're going to put some information, facts about McDonald Ranch, but that's actually where they installed the plutonium in the bombs. The walk from the parking lot to the Trinity site is approximately one eighth of a mile. And they've got different vendors out here, like here they're doing Trinitite viewing. And they use one of those radioactive detectors just to show you that it's uh, active trinitite. Um, of course, removing any trinitite that you may find on the actual spot itself is illegal to remove. You've got vendors that are selling wares like patches, mugs, stickers, magnets, stuff like that. So we're in the center of the crater. That's where the obelisk is. And that is the center mass point. Um, I'll put some details about the size of the crater. Of course, with the wind blowing and everything, it starts filling up. But this fenced-in area is that area of the uh, the crater, which surrounds the circle of the crater itself. And while you're here, they've got different pictures set up on the fence line that we're going to actually pass and go see just to check out the history. All right, so we took the uh, about five minute bus ride from the parking lot to the McDonald House, McDonald Ranch House. This is the entrance. So the McDonald Ranch at the Trinity site is actually the final assembly point before the bombs went off. in comparison to the state of New Mexico. Alamogordo, that's where we started off this morning. Socorro, we're gonna go off, off to lunch there. Uh, Socorro, interesting in, interestingly enough, has the VLA, the Very Large Array, and that is with those huge satellite uh, dishes that you've probably seen on the movie Contact that Jodie Foster was in. And uh, you can go ahead and check that out. Truth or Consequences, uh, they also have a lot of hot springs there that you might want to check out. So New Mexico's got a lot of things to see. Carlsbad is over on the eastern side. That's where the caverns are. But let's go into the McDonald House. Let's go and check out the inside. McDonald Ranch. This was the plutonium assembly room. I can kind of feel some radioactivity in here. <laughs> well, that's the exit only. Let's wander through. This and that's the basement. Um, not open to the public. So looks like it's a cellar. Very thick, maybe a storm, storm shelter. We'll see. They have custom built-in cabinets. And 
believe, is this a cistern? This was the cistern used as a pool. And that's really all there is about the McDonald Ranch house out here. So here we are, we've made it, our hair's all crazy. We just kind of made a spur of the moment to come out here. Cause we've been out to White Sands plenty of times when I was stationed here and Dan was just here. <laughs> but a lot of people do uh, White Sands and they show it in their videos, but we wanted to come out here because the sunset out here is pretty cool too. We just hope that it's not too blurry from all the, uh, the sand. When the wind starts blowing, that gypsum sand starts going everywhere. When we get back into town, we may, uh, take you to a unique place to grab a drink we're running out of time here and we got stuff that we need to do and we've made plans tomorrow to uh have dinner with some of our other friends that we haven't seen because they're both working they're not retired uh so we want to make sure we see it before we leave yeah so cal and geneva they've been gracious hosts the whole time we've been here i say host <laughs> we've been here we're staying in our own rig but they're staying in the elks with us as well they're at the front uh and their reflection they're part of the grand design family as well but the people we're gonna go see tomorrow is gonna be Kristen and travis and their boys uh and they lived in fam camp with us for a little bit and they're also part of the grand design family at least they used to be nope that's not snow So here we are, they have, I don't know, do you know how many parking lots they have here? Probably close to over a dozen pull-offs and maybe a few dozen. It is about a, I wanna say a 12 mile drive to go through and loop around. And this is gypsum sand. Gypsum. Nice and soft. Reminds me of uh, Florida and the Panhandle area. So yeah, everybody that usually comes out here, all the videos you normally see, and nothing against those uh, those YouTubers as well, but I think sometimes there's some hidden features that people miss, and that is the sunset. Because when the sun drops behind the mountains, it's pretty cool. And it's not as hot, and the sand's actually pretty cool on your feet. So wear flip-flops out here so you can get some exfoliation on the bottom of your feet, especially if you've got the crocodile feet like this guy. Oh, so let's catch it between the two dunes. I'll see if I can put some facts in here, like, you know, how many square miles this this is, how many grains of sand this contains. Some tidbit information about me and Dan when I was stationed here and before we got, you know, rotund. We actually did the five mile alkali trail. Yep. Barefoot. Yep. I did it a few times. Not barefoot. Uh, all the times I did it barefoot. He did not. The that first, time, the was first the time we wore shoes. No, I know the first time was shoes, but I did it a few times while you're in the desert. I go out on Saturdays and I will say this: it did rub like on my big toe from digging in the sand to get up the big dunes. After doing that, it wears the skin off on your toe meat. It exfoliates, and you work your glutes and your calves Everything out. Else. <laughs> but there was one day I was here, and somebody had died. Oh, like an old, hour later it was that older gentleman i remember watching that or reading it uh i think you told me about it when i called you from the desert but they they warn you you got to have water with you and um they tell you there's this big sign that says there's no water past that point available to you so if you don't have it you're on your own and they even have a little temperature thing before you go out on the on the trail itself that says if it's this high this is how much water you are recommended to have He's not the only one. There's been several people that have passed away out here because they they misjudge because the sand, even in the high, when you walk, when it's super hot, like in triple digits, the sand, as you your feet go through it, make you feel like you're a little bit cooler than what you are. And then if you're dehydrated, then yeah. But what always amazes me is with this place is so huge and vast, how is anybody gonna find somebody missing? You know, it'd be too late. Starting to go down now. 
You can see everybody coming out here for the sunset. The sunset out here is pretty cool. Don't be discouraged when you come through the checkpoint because it takes you forever to get out here. So you'll be looking at the dunes and it looks like it's got a bunch of weeds in it. The dunes, when you get all the way out here that look like snow, they're beyond all that. <laughs> when you hit the packed sand and get off the pavement, you're starting to enter the actual, the white dunes, not necessarily the stuff that have the bushes. Now there are bushes and stuff out here, but they're not within the dunes, like when you first come in. But if you got kids and if you like the family thing, well, you can get your snow sleds. What do you call those round discs? They're like little toboggans, kind of like from Christmas vacation, except they're plastic and not the metal ones. Uh, we actually have two of them. They're in our storage. We saw them when we were putting stuff in there. There is a museum out front and uh, you can buy them there, but there's also Walmart in town. And because this is all year round, they sell those, those sleds. Let's flip it around now, because so, the sun's getting ready to... It's supposed to be setting, at least, they said 728, but it'll be going behind the, the mountains here before too long. How are you going to get out? <laughs> <laughs> Folks is what we call a sand angel. <laughs> it kind of looks like a sand smush. We're gonna bring you to the grocery store. The grocery store. This is Lowe's Signature Market right here in Alamogordo. Flip it around. But we're not going in here for what you think. No. We'll bring you along. Stay tuned. You know what I'm spelling it here. I'm just thinking that. This is the, the Lowe's here. There's your badass coffee of Hawaii. Oh, that used to be ice cream stuff, remember? But we are actually going into the bar. Yeah. In the grocery store. In the grocery store. You can shop and drink. Yeah. That's what they have on tap here. Your Lowe's. are on the road right now and we're in Hatch, New Mexico. We're actually staying at Faywood, New Mexico at the Faywood Hot Springs. It's a hot springs that used to have day use now, but just uh, <laughs> full disclosure, Faywood is a clothing optional place and they have one side where you can bring your RV in, which clothing is required, but on the opposite side, uh, where I think that there is mostly tent campers and maybe some pop-up or uh, truck campers, that is clothing optional. So you might see people naked or not, as well as some of their hot springs. But yes, that's where we're staying, but we've been out there a few times. This, this is our third time staying there, I think. It is. The RV. And every time we go there, we make a stop here. Not just because the green chilies here are awesome. Everybody's heard about Hatch Green Chilies. Well, they do come from Hatch, New Mexico, but because the place we're getting ready to go into, because we're foodies, as you've seen, <laughs> if you've ever watched any of our videos, especially the one where we're McGuire's, uh, that's another reason that we're here. It's supposed to have the world famous green chili burger, which we've had, and it is very, very good, but it also has a chocolate shake that. And I think I'm gonna order both of those today. Mm, I think I am too. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna bring you along and. Yep. Was this not on uh, a famous TV show? Was it? I think so. Maybe on the Food Network. I think it was also introduced because. It may have been. They also do barbecue here too. It's not just hamburgers and stuff, but I still hope they have the chocolate green chili shake because. Your mouth gets hot from eating it, but then it cools it as well. So it's a, it's a love-hate relationship with that thing. But we're gonna take you along and you're gonna see what we see. Because this is just another thing that if you're just wanting to get off the beaten path and not do the mainstream stuff, the Faywood is a good place. And this is a place because it's kind of away from a lot of the touristy, touristy things that New Mexico has to offer, especially from the North. So let's go eat. Let's go eat, come on. Sparky's Barbecue, world famous burgers, barbecue, and shakes.
order. We got the green, it was the number one, the seven ounce. The world famous green chili burger. Burger, mm -hmm. it comes with, I guess, that's So you can yours. get fries, I don't know what else you can get with it, we just want fries, fries with it. Fries or coleslaw are your options. But this is what is awesome. It may look unappetizing to some people, but it is probably one of the best things I think I've ever had, because you get that, that spice, that bite, but you also got the ice cream that keeps it nice and cool. The burger's are really good too. <laughs> And you also have sides of onions and pickles if you want to add to your burger. Like I said, you can either get the fries or the coleslaw. Okay, but we're going to sit down and enjoy dinner. So until the next video. Where will the road take you? It's going to take us back to our truck, which is over there behind the camera. That's where it's going to do. Sand.